Hey, this is Matt once again. What about your other videos? The paid request this time for Bobby. Thank you so much for that. For those interested in requests in any type of videos, topics, reactions, commentaries, reviews, re reviews, what have you, uh, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. Now, this is for a phone call Redo, Rado, Teen of the Sea Monsters. Now, this is a film that, for I understand, was made around 2005 or 2008. There's like two different years that showcases. But I guess in the U.S. it did not get a release until like 2019. Because in 2019, that's around the time Godzilla Teen of the Monsters came out. So I guess someone saw this film. Okay, fine, we'll finally release it in the U.S. We'll change it to Teen of the Sea Monsters. And we'll have a cover that looks very similar to it. To try to get people to, I don't know, get tricked or... Hey, I saw that movie. Let's try this film out. Even though it's a film from like 2008, 2005, that era. Now, I guess the director had done something called Dammerer 4. I guess some people liked it. So they got his own film. And this film is terrible. It is a 3.9 and I am to be. It deserves it. it. Absolutely deserves it. It takes place on a battleship called the Yamato. It takes place in the 1940s, about 1942, during World War II. And we're kind of introduced to some characters. One guy has a pregnant wife, and he's hoping for a boy. That's why he's praying. He's like, please give me a boy with a penis. Penis. While you have this younger guy who has this sweetheart girlfriend and says goodbye to his grandma. So they get on the ship, the battleship Yamato. And for some reason, part of it is black and white. Until it finally gets to the point where now it's in color. Kind of seems random. From black and white to color. And the effects in this is absolutely terrible. Why they did not try to go for the old school miniature work, I have no idea. Because at least I would have made it charming. But instead, they went for some... Like, the creature at times is practical. But the shots and rendering are so blurry and dark. You can't tell. So you see more of the blurry digital background and digital effects. And anytime there's a ship on screen, it's digital. I'm like, why can't it be a miniature? Why can't it be you know any amount? No, it's all badly done digital work. Horribly rendered, muddled CGI over this like practical effect where the face looks like Godzilla, but the body be a little bit more fish-like. So while you, you, I can't even say you get to know the characters, pretty much they talk a bit. This guy tries to fill up what he thinks is a woman, but it's an old guy. And the old guy warns him about this dragon sea creature thing. Uh, there's a point where they're shooting at something i guess they thought it was a submarine or or so forth but they hear crying and then you find out that it was the offspring the kid of redo rado whatever the hell his name is who of course is pissed and wants revenge and starts attacking the ships a lot of this movie is people in these compartments arguing and talking and there's a lot of yelling Yelling over the top of their lungs, yelling, ah, barking out orders, talking some more about the same thing. What do we do next? What should we do? What can we do? What should we do? Can we fight it? I don't know how we fight it. Let's try to fight it. I don't know how we fight it. What is it? Is that what it is? I won't point the smaller, they call it bonefish, and bad CGI jump onto the ship and very much haphazard where you can't tell what's going on so then a guy's walking away and his arm kind of just plops off and dies of his wounds and I don't know if we see that those bonefish again I don't remember and this is one of those if you take one of those Godzilla kaiju movies but you don't have the miniature work charm of it it's a bad decision. It's a bad call, Ripley. It's a bad call. So you don't care about the characters. Okay, you know 
three things about two of them at the beginning. At one point, they find, I guess, an American Navy pilot, not pilot, but American Navy guy who's a gunner. They bring him on board. He's able to talk a little bit of Japanese. They put him in a jail cell. They found like his help when they're trying to shoot the creature down. You don't really know much about him or do you have much character development on anybody. I think a lot of it's just people in, on this boat having conversations on what to do and what we should do next. And bark out orders, hit him, get him, get him. And take the shot anytime someone goes, he's too close, we can't hit him, he's too close. We need some distance in order to hit him, in order to shoot him, he's too close. And the creature knows that if he gets too close, they can't shoot. Because the, the guns can't move, the cans can't move that much. Dain distance. It's just pretty cheap looking movie. Again, it's close to 20 times where they go, it's too close to fire the guns. And sometimes they put in some random stupid humor. Like there's a guy with an eye patch and he's opened up his buttons. And when he opens up his buttons, he's like, boing, zoing, bonk, boing, boing. Why? I have no idea. I mean, the creature, you can barely get a look at the puppetry because it's mired and muddled and darkness, CGI, crap all around or lightning keeps hitting it. There's a potentially interesting shot when it jumps up and is hidden with lightning. You see kind of the inner workings of the monster when the lightning illuminates the inside of him. But the other stuff just completely defeats what possible coolness that could be in seeing that. It got to a point, I don't know how many ships were with them. Because like, well this ship got destroyed and that ship got destroyed. and that, Well how many ships were in this fleet? To begin with. It's like any. Oh shit there's a new one popping up. Where the hell did that come from? Where did those people come from? It could barely tell like okay. How many ships did we start with? And that one comes in and that's blown up. Or that top is blown up. Or this one is sunk. And half the time. It's either bad explosion by CGI. Or one fight happens. That's kind of off camera. We don't see it much. Very poorly directed movie. The action scenes are so... They're mishandled that you can't tell what's going on. And it doesn't help that anytime you see the ship is this horrendous looking CGI. That looks like a PlayStation 1 game. I'm not even exaggerating on that. So again, the spoilers. The, the, the younger guy... He has the idea to sink parts of the ship so it's lower, so the guns can be lower. And uh, they're shooting at it, they have to turn it, they turn the nick time, they shoot the thing in the stomach, a blast of blood comes out, it sinks. They go, no, don't shoot anymore, let it die with dignity. They move on. They mentioned, wow, we got this new maneuver, we're going to do well in the war. Because remember, it's World War II and they're going to try to kill the Americans. And then it has one of the weirdest, most depressing endings in a kaiju movie I've ever seen in my life. Because then it goes back to black and white, like the beginning. It's now 1945. They're in a battle and everybody dies. <laughs> everybody fucking dies. And it's this trying to be weird artistic way of doing it where it's all in black and white and all these shots are kind of put on top of one another and a person will go down and they'll come back up with blood on their face. And then outside there's a, I shit you not, a Kabuki man. Fuck you, Sergeant Kabuki man, NYPD. Like, literally in a kabuki outfit. Trying to be some metaphor, I don't know what. Just throwing shit. 
I don't know what the fuck it was meant to be, honestly. I really don't. That went over on me. And that was the only... It's like... all the Even if you like these characters, which there's... I don't think there's any reason to, but even if you do, they're all dead from the war. They all die. And then some weird, again, black and white artsy fartsy and fucking Sergeant Kabuti Man NYPD's out there doing shit. And then are we meant to believe that the creature was still alive and dragged them down? Or is that supposed to be a metaphor? That you killed me, but look, I dragged you down? Or I don't fucking know. I don't know. I'm trying to supposed to be some metaphor about war or whatever the hell. Whatever. It just was ridiculous and depressing and just... I mean, if you thought the movie was bad enough, that ending kind of took the cake, took the taco, took the taco, pal. I mean, if you need to see every... Oh, God, I would love to see my friend Michael Keane watch this film. Because he's in the Kaiju films, what he would see, say about it. It's on YouTube for free. For those who want to watch it, it's on YouTube for free. If you want a lot of boredom, a lot of bad special effects, a very no miniature work for some reason, a creature that, in the end credits, you saw a bit of the puppetry and it looked better there than it did in the movie. It's just an ugly looking movie. The characters, there's no development on them. You don't really get to know much about them. The conversations seem like repeated at the end and the end. And a depressing, artsy farsy ending. It just. What is there to recommend? No wonder it gets a 3.99 to be. I mean, hell, I thought that one movie... What the hell was it called? Monster... I don't know what the hell it was called. <sighs> Reptilian or something? I thought that was bad. This is probably worse. <laughs> so that said, thanks for watching. Take care. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.